Hey everybody, I had another subscriber request that I show how to flint nap a slab into a knife or a dagger blade. Now, I have a previous video on how to make a slab like this into an arrowhead and more about slabs, but let's get started. First of all, you have several choices. You can either buy a slab like this, you know, two, two and a half inches wide. I think this is about three eighths of an inch thick. Um, and it's just a rectangle, rectangular slab. And you could work this down, and then when it comes to the curve of the blade, you're gonna have to bust all that away. So one thing that I've started doing was I bought a tile saw, and I'll do another video on that. But now I can cut that slab so that it's already in the rough shape of the knife. And then you can get fancier and have the part where it's going to haft into the handle. So when you do it on, an, on a tile saw, you end up with a nice flat surface, perpendicular surface, which we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the arrowhead. We're gonna remove the face and then zigzag and make the sharp edge. If you're too cheap to buy a tile saw, you can buy these in the tile cutting section of let's say Lowe's or Home Depot. And it doesn't make a perfect perpendicular cut, but it can be used. Let me show you that. And what you would do is if you wanted to take this little corner off, you would put it like this and then squeeze really hard. And it does make a pretty good little cut, fairly perpendicular. But again, I like the tile saw for nice straight edges. And you can continue to nip like this. So you could continue to get more of a curve in the shape. This is kind of cheating, but then again, slabs are cheating. So we're talking about authentic versus modern day flint napping. As I showed in the other video, it's important that you have a really roughed up edge on these slabs. So go ahead and use your grindstone and make sure it's really roughed up so that it's nice and white, chalky. And so here's my general setup. I use a rubber pad with a little notch in it. You can buy these on flint napping websites or make them yourself. And then I've got my slab and I'm going to hold it against the slab and use my pressure flaker. Okay, this is a copper tipped ishi stick and flick flakes into that little trough. So I hold it down here and you can start anywhere, but I'll start back here at an end. And you just want to come down maybe about a millimeter. And there's our first flake. And I'm going to continue about every quarter inch down that one side. Sometimes to get enough pressure, I've got the issue stick under my arm like this. And I've got this arm, this hand braced against the inside of my leg. And now, if I really want to blast a flake as far as possible, I load it up here with pressure and then use my thigh to push in to give me better strength. You can see that traveled all the way across. Okay, so here's what we have. Now I'm gonna come from this side and try to shoot across and clear this face. But there are some pretty deep little cuts into here. And so we're gonna see if that's a problem. Again, I'm gonna shoot from this side over into here, and hopefully the flakes will meet in the middle. The flake scars. Okay, don't get discouraged. We can always try to fix this later, but as you start to pick up momentum, a lot of the times um, it's going to go ahead and meet in the middle. There, you see? So that second flake went all the way across and it blew out all that little step right there. So now that I got that momentum started, it should come all the way down even for this really stiff step right there. Okay, so I've got pretty much this whole face removed and I'm gonna go ahead and do the tips, come around the corners, do this whole back and I'll get back to you in just a minute. So here we are after I've gone around every side, every edge with the technique I just showed you. And I did clear the face on both sides. However, some of these I call fingernails. Some of those will pop off, some won't. Some of them are a little deeper, what we call little shelves. And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start zigzagging my edge. And then my final drive flakes going across the surface might actually clean some of this up. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is go from the outside in towards my little pocket 
and just grab a corner and flick it off. So now you can see that I've started developing a center line. So now I'm gonna bring my pressure flaker right here and then flick off the next one and then flip it over. And this is again shown in greater detail in my arrowhead video, but let's just start a center line here. For the sake of time, I'll just go ahead and zigzag around the entire piece, but you can see that I'm trying to keep a center line of little ups and downs, zigs and zags, and just keep working down the piece. So here we are after taking that flat edge and making it a zigzag pattern all the way around. And what we can do now is grind those. This does a couple things. Number one, it makes it safer to work with. Number two, what we're gonna do now is every place there's a down, like this right here would be a down, we're gonna poke it into the piece and off. So poke, poke, poke. Then we flip it over, and then these are now gonna be facing down. So you would go poke, 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 poke. And you're gonna try to drive into the piece as well. So let me give it another grinding and then we'll, we'll get on that. So I put the tip of a sharpened pressure flaker right here and drive it in. And that took a little bit more of a flake there. So now I go to the next one and the next one and the next one and so on. So I've gone along and I've taken all the low spots out and then flipped the piece. And then now what were the high spots are now the low spots. Those little ups and downs of the zigzag popped all those off. And you see that I have a pretty good center line, except it's a little rough. It's a little jaggedy, especially like right here. So what I'm gonna do now, my final round is gonna be with this horseshoe nail pressure flaker. And it's the same concept if it's down low relative to the center line, pop it off. If it's high, then turn it over and pop it that way. So I'm gonna go one more time around and this is your last chance to, to shape it and give yourself a nice sharp point and you're almost ready to half this into a handle. So in less than a half an hour, I was able to use just pressure flaking and make a slab into this nice utilitarian little dagger or a little, maybe a little skinning blade. Now at this point, you could use a stick to make a handle or you could use a bone. This is a deer leg bone and you would cut it and then make a notch there, fit this in there. I think that'd be pretty cool. But I think what I'm gonna do on this one is use a deer antler with this little curve to it. Look at how nice that's gonna look. So I might do another video on how to half this into a handle, but that's how to make a knife out of a slab and happy flint napping.